Hello, and welcome to the Heathen's Journey podcast. I'm your host, Siri Vincent Clough, and I'm so glad you're here. This is the show where I explore heathenry through a queer lens. We will be talking about traditional witchcraft, runes, folklore, and so much more. Join us, won't you, as we journey to the ends of the Nine Realms and back. Hello, and welcome back to the Heathen's Journey podcast. My name is Siri Vincent Pluff, and I am the host of the show. So today is going to be a pretty lo-fi podcast episode. It's another one where I'll be doing a deep dive into the runes and, um, yeah, just a good kind of relaxed time to take a deep dive. So a lot has been happening in my world, um, which is part of why I have not updated since around Midsommar. Um, I launched an apothecary. So the apothecary is now hosted on my website, which is northernlightswitch.com slash apothecary. And um, I've just always kind of been curious about retail, and I've always been a little bit of a magpie. So I wanted to put that to use here. So I've just been really busy with um, getting everything up and running there. Um, I am definitely doing a lot of pre-ordering. I've got some amazing tarot decks up for sale. Um, they're like really great. Most of them are queer. Um, many of them are, they're all indie decks, I believe actually. Yeah. So they're all indie decks too. Um, and I've also got runes and I'll be bringing in books and I've got just incense and a whole bunch of other amazing things for you. So check that out northernlightswitch.com slash apothecary. And it's also just, it's summer. It's been a really busy time for me. So yeah, I don't know. I don't really have too many other excuses for just being a little bit MIA. Eventually this podcast will get into a regular schedule, I promise. So today we're going to be doing a deep dive into Kaunas, but first I wanted to uh, just kind of talk about some summer related things. So the summer side of the Primstav or the summer season is one of a lot of work. Um, you know, you're, if we're thinking in terms of a culture that has a light side of the year and a dark side of the year and, you know, harvests are shorter, like the growing season is much shorter. There is just a lot that needs to be done in a short amount of time in the summer. And here in Minnesota, we definitely feel that. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but here it seems like we cram a year's worth of concerts and activities and all of that into three short months. And I'm um, not going to lie, that's, that can get kind of exhausting. Um, this year, of course, is a little different because we're still on the verge of coming out of quarantine, um, although the Delta variant is definitely worrying. So I encourage you to continue masking just so that we can not have the Delta variant be spreading like crazy. Um, definitely be more cautious than you were before quarantine, in my opinion. That's that's how I'm living my life right now. Um, but the summer is also a time when I personally have struggled. I definitely feel more connected with my ancestors, um, more connected culturally in the winter, um, but I've been experiencing a lot of climate grief lately. So it's really smoggy in Minneapolis right now because of the wildfires out west that just seem to be getting worse and worse every year. Um, and we're in an intense drought. I think it's sprinkling just like a little bit today. But other than that, um, it's really hard to keep vegetables growing because of the intensity. Um, and yeah, it's just been a really, really hard and really, really weird year. We've had temperatures in the 90s. It seems like most days this summer, um, which is definitely not what I remember of summers from my childhood. And during my childhood, it was in the 80s here. So definitely feeling a lot of climate grief, a lot of um, sadness, 
over losing summer as I know it. Um, and also honestly over losing winter, you know, knowing that, um, knowing that winter, which is one of my very favorite seasons is endangered right now. Um, and all of what that means for our growing season and, um, hydration, um, of not hydration, um, water levels in the fields, um, you know, anticipating some really difficult growing seasons coming up. So it's felt like a really heavy summer. Um, and Kenaz is a rune that gives me a lot of hope. And it is also a rune that, um, is a fire rune. So it's fitting that we're covering this rune during the summer months. Um, Kenaz, the fire of knowledge, the burning desire to seek the truth. We left off with Raido, our forward momentum and the willpower to travel the spirit realms. Kenaz is the tool we need, the torch we carry in darkness. Kenaz is a rune of opposites, but also of careful balance. While the fire can warm the home and light up dark nights, it can also burn your cozy house to the ground. If the flame is too weak, it won't produce enough warmth. But if it is too great, it will destroy all in its path. Kenaz is all of those things at once. Kenaz, then, is not only the fire that keeps us warm, it is also what creates a home for us. We know from histories and the Icelandic sagas that people would use the torch to claim land. If you could walk around a place holding a torch aloft, that was a claim to that space as your home. We can also suspect that the torch was used to ward camps and homes against attack. Someone would carry the torch around the camp, making the camp and war marking the camp and warding from spiritual and physical attack. A fire on the hearth makes a home warm, but it can also be used to light the torch that wards the home. Therefore, Kenaz creates warmth, and it also protects you. In many occult and magical traditions, you should draw a circle to create sacred space. In Wicca, this looks like cleansing and charging the space, calling the corners, and calling in any gods or goddesses that you work with. In other traditions, this looks like burning sage or incense or any other herbs um, to kind of mark the space as spiritual. Many traditions use fire as a marker of sacred space. I know that I've never really had an altar in my many years of practicing witchcraft that didn't feature a large candle in the center. Many who follow the Norse path will carry a candle throughout the home to cleanse the space, to protect the space, and to cast quote-unquote circle. Kenaz is a rune that represents all of this. It is our generative relationship with fire. Circle also creates spaces of truth. It creates spaces designed for speaking with your gods, spaces for self-reflection, and spaces for finding your spiritual truth. Kenaz, then, is the alchemist of your practice, transforming its energy to something higher. It makes sense, then, that Kenaz can also serve as one way to transition between the realms of life and death. The more I study the runes, the more I feel them each as individual spirits. They have their own stories to tell, and while there is a deep tradition for what the runes mean, they also have a different personality for different rune workers. Working with the runes means cultivating a relationship with them, period. The runes also help us to communicate knowledge from within. Kenaz is not only concerned with the fire, but with the stories told around the fire. This is one of the primary differences between Kenaz and now these, the other fire rune. I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end of the episode. There's a connection between the element of fire and the memory of our ancestors. There are many recorded burial rites of the Norse, but cremation stands out. Whether burned in effigy, on a pyre, or setting their ship aflame, fire played a role in the funerary rites of my ancestors. Fire initiates the transition of the dead to the spirit realm, and many believe that it was a fire ritual that inspired the new king or the spiritual leader to take their role. 
Ken Oz is the mystery of regeneration through death or sacrifice. Kenaz and Nalvis both represent communication with and honoring of our ancestors. The funeral pyre is a gateway for the soul, a way to release the soul from the trappings of their body and into the spirit realm. This release of the spirit is necessary for it to be born again in a new form. But the funeral pyre isn't only for the dead, it is also a necessary witness for the living. Through the service, we are able to release our own attachments to our dead loved ones. We see them transform before our eyes into ash. There is no body that could be reanimated and come back in our loved one's old form. It is a complete release from the physical form of their soul used in the lifetime we knew them. And still, it's a cycle. All this talk of funeral pyres and death and spirits is only one aspect of Kanaz and one half of its association with reincarnation. Kenaz can also represent human passion, lust, sexual love, all emotions and aspects of life within the realm of the goddess Freya. This is the second aspect of Kenaz, the rehoming of the soul into a new body. And this comes from the creative passions of people. This comes from the human urge to continue to grow, to change, to keep the collective story of humanity moving forward. Well, that is all very grand, but often life is generated in lustful moments in the back seats of cars, the bathrooms at clubs, the convenient meeting places of people who just want to fuck. And still the spark of Kenaz is there with them. Kenaz is also directly linked to knowledge and truth. When we say something came to light, we are inadvertently making the connection between fire, light, and truth. Brand from brand kindles until it's burned. Spark kindles from spark. Man becomes wise by speaking to men, but gets dull staying dumb. Halvamal, 57. Some Rune scholars like to think of Kenaz as a metaphorical light of truth, a torch. I've been thinking of holy rage lately. The world is a trash fire. I tried to have a very casual introduction to this episode, and yet I went into the climate grief that I am feeling, this heat that feels so completely unnatural to my body, to this place. I can feel the land spirits crying out and raging against humanity. Even with Trump out of office, there's so much to do to repair, and there are so many things that we can't repair at this point. We just have to mitigate. People are still being held in cages at the border. Police violence is out of control. The pandemic continues to rage through the country with new variants. These are all things that so desperately need to change. And yet, even as I struggle with the fire and heat of summer and what that means, and the wildfires out west, and how it all connects together. I have to remember that fire is necessary. Fire is destructive. Fire is cleansing. As the forest and the prairie need regular fires to clean out the old growth and make way for new, so does the fire of truth need to purge, purge, purge. Kenaz is both truth and mystery, the process of death for regeneration. I keep hoping that as the truth comes out, we will see a change in the trajectory. But there is no so much injustice to air. There is so much that needs to be illuminated and so much that needs death. What we need is a transformative fire of the funeral pyre, that transmutation between states to make room for new growth. The only thing that gives me hope is the sense that these times are the final death throes of the old unjust ways, that this is the desperate clawing of an old society screaming to try to maintain their relevance. Kenaz at Ragnarok is not the gentle illumination of pretty poems and truisms. It is the consuming fire that will take it all down, for even the gods are corrupt. Kenaz is the fire that burns down the facade, leaving behind truth. Kenaz is the fire and the light and the darkness, the ace in the hole, the pawn about to check the king. 
Kenaz is the light of truth that shines when journalists take on corrupt politics. Kenaz is the fire that spits from the mouth of human rights lawyers, winning case after case for their immigrant clients. Use the energy of Kenaz in these times to find inner strength necessary to resist, to revolt. I also want to talk here about how Kenaz and Ansus can work together. Fire, after all, needs air in order to thrive. If you've ever tended a fire, you know that there are times when you need to blow on the fire or um, kind of move the logs around so that the fire has more room to breathe. So Ansu's is that rune of truth, of connecting with higher truth and higher spirit. And then Kenaz is that like wild dissemination of that truth. It is spreading. It is creatively expressing these things in order to allow for just like it is this beautiful beautiful spread of growth so I've been teaching creating in weird times with Cassandra Snow this summer and um, that class is actually finished up now and goodness like I've been thinking so much about fire and my relationship with fire and creativity and how it's so essential my dad always will use the term um, fire in the belly, you know, fire in the belly for um, politics, for uh, making things right. And that also is kenaz. But kenaz has another meaning that people don't talk about as often. The ulcer, boil, or scab. So most esoteric rune workers use the Anglo-Saxon meaning of the rune, fire, rather than the ulcer, Norwegian and Icelandic. It's a little more encouraging, and it makes more sense if we're working through some personal expansion stuff to think about Kanaz as a fire rune. It also makes sense in terms of the progression of the Futhark up until this point. You need that extra fire to keep your chariot moving forward or follow through on the ideas that you've sparked so far. But I will also talk about the healing power of this ulcer image. The ulcer is the pain of creativity not fulfilled, of ideas shelved and set aside. So often we associate ulcers with stress, with being overworked and or not having access to the right kind of nourishment. In a lot of forms of herbal medicine, ulcers are seen as being caused by excess heat in the body. So there is still friction here, but it is stymied. You, there this can also be an indication that there is something you need to exorcise. Kenaz then encourages you to get it out before it becomes an issue. So I see this also as kind of working with that secondary meaning of thurisaz, which is the thorn. Um, so if Kenaz is showing where the sickness is, where we need medicine, where we need the um, boil to be let or the um, ulcer to be extracted, then the thorn might be a way of doing that extraction. It might be a way of popping that blister, right? So using these two runes together makes a lot of sense to me. After all, Kenaz, like a, a Kenaz backwards on an Isa, makes Thurisaz. So think about that. Think about how these runes can kind of come together. And as I continue to uh, work through this series in the podcast, I am going to start talking about how the runes relate to one another, because so often we just think about them and they're siloed uh, understandings, um, or sorry, they're siloed, um, meanings, but, uh, in order to really throw a spread of runes and understand what they're saying, you need to understand their relationship to one another and how they talk to each other. And on that note, <laughs> um, I also want to take a moment to do a quick comparison between the two fire runes, Kenaz and Nalthys. So fire is an extremely important element in Nordic culture because our mythology starts with a clash of fire and ice. It is out of this clash that the world is born. Therefore, we should pay special attention to runes that are fire or ice in our readings. They show us beginnings. Kenaz and Nauthys show two different sides of this element. Kenaz is the fire rune that works most closely with the creative aspect of fire. When I think of the first fire, I think of Kenaz before I think of Nauthys. 
Where Kanaz is generative with the power to overtake and consume, Nauthis represents need. We approach these fires at very different times, and they both have power to burn beyond our control. You can think about them both working to cr- together to create this balance within the element of fire. Kenaz, creation. Now these, need. Creation and need. Finding a balance, working with these two runes, understanding creativity as a way of bringing our needs forward. Creativity as a way of working to meet our needs, um, creativity and how we structure our societies so that we make sure that all of our needs are met. Um, the ulcer that shows us where we need to make change, the destruction necessary for that first spark of hope. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Heathen's Journey podcast. I know that this is a bit of an abrupt ending, but I'm not entirely sure how to end it. And spirit is telling me this is the end of this episode. So thank you. Hail. And that is it for today's episode of the Heathen's Journey podcast. A huge thank you and shout out to all of my students and patrons for making this work available. If you want to become a patron and support the podcast, head on over to patreon.com slash northern lights witch. I post full moon and new moon ritual guides, rune readings for each of the turning of the zodiac season, and so much more. If you would like to follow me in between episodes, you can find me on Instagram at northern.lights.witch or on Twitter at northlightwitch. Until next time, stay weird.